Welcome back everybody to Cricket Bat Info. I'm Mark and today we're looking at a Blue Room custom bat. Let's take a look. So Blue Room Cricket is Rob Pack over in England. Uh, you can look them up yourself, www.blueroomcricket.co.uk. This is the full length bag this bat has come in. And I'll just say that it's actually a really nice quality bag. So I'll put that aside. So the owner sent me this bat to review and the background of it is he asked Rob Pack for a custom bat to be under 2.9 or around 2.9, make it as big as possible. So this is one of those cases where we're looking for a low density bat that performs, but not necessarily looking too much at the quality of the willow. So this bat, I think it was 420 Australian dollars delivered, but he had to wait quite a while for Rob to find the the correct piece of timber So we're looking at months when the bat did arrive. He actually got a nice note from uh, Rob uh, saying that I hope it goes well and That's the shape Very very nice shape. So you've got there that big mid swell um, Right in the middle there reminds me a lot of one of the Tim Keeley shapes to be honest uh, but it's, I mean, look, a lot of shapes are fairly generic. It's got that flowing spine up into a mid peak, nice big edges there, and then down, not into a duck bill, just shaped down through the toe. And uh, yeah, it's a really nice looking shape. Uh, it is big. Uh, let's have a look at that. We're gonna see how it fills out the gauge and have a look at that. Tiny little bit of concaving there, maybe a millimeter. Um, the spine is dead on 67. No worries there. I don't even have to measure that. Uh, and the face camber itself is probably what would be a 5 mil on the face there, but really heavily boned at the edges. So I'm thinking this is a fairly soft press. And then as far as the uh, edges are concerned, Rob has actually really heavily boned them, knowing that he didn't want those to crack. So I I do assume that this is going to be like a pro press that he would do for a player. Um, just that amount of compression that he's managed to achieve uh, through boning is quite impressive. Round toe, fair bow, you can see that there. Uh, probably about a centimetre of bow. And I do like that shape. I like these sort of uh, nice flowing shapes with plenty of wood in that hitting area. Uh, not so much down here. I mean, this is for an Australian condition, so it's not really uh, that important down here. I'm not too worried about whether that's too uh, thin because of that amount of boning that's going on. The ball's more likely to deflect if it hits that edge there rather than crack, um, depending on the willow and the ball and whether you jam down on concrete. Let's take some measurements. So make sure that's zeroed. And we've got here 18 and a half mil at the edge, about 26 in the center of the toe. The edge, remembering it's probably got about five mil of boning there, is just over 38. And the shoulders are nearly 16. Down here, give that a measurement. 35.8 to the face, yeah, 107.4. Uh, we'll do the spine, um, but look, I'm, I know it's going to be on or just over 67, 68. What I was talking about with those edges, if I didn't make that clear, when I pull that down, can you see just how much curve there is on that edge? That's you know what you really want to try to achieve is to to get a nice round. Uh, rounded area on there if you can it just depends on how the the um, manufacturer leaves it but you definitely want to harden your edges and this sort of area of your bat and up here now Rob does apply a his own brew so when the bats come out they have this oiled look um, they're not polished with um, polishes that make it look whiter so we can see from the Willow here, we're not looking at a, a pretty bat. Um, this was purely as, as the owner was concerned about 
weight and size. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a bit of an eighth. So it's in that realm um, that bat makers would say is what you want to probably look for, seven to nine. And Rob's uh, email said it was finished at about two, eight and a half, and uh, the owner wanted two, nine and it's two, eight and a half. So it hasn't put on any weight since it's got here, uh, which is good. It means whatever he's using to finish the bat, it's not fluctuating uh, when it arrives here. So that's really nice. Um, on the back, it actually looks a lot cleaner than it does on the front, which is quite, quite funny, but you do have that skew down there. I do actually think it's a really nice bat um, to look at as far as the shape. Uh, I know some of you would have already clicked off because of grains. Um, but you're going to miss the best part, I'm sorry. Actually, I'll just measure that uh, blade just to see if we've got 55 and yep, it's just on 55 there. If you're familiar with the channel or if this is the first time you visit, what I do is I don't do a ball bounce, I do a tap up. So this is um, my bat, this is a Grey Nichols Ultimate and it's been used. Um, so it's a comparison of what a bat that's pinging should ping like and then we can sort of see the really high quality bat as they behave in their unknot state. So I just jot that down and this one definitely pings off that stain. You can see there that's got a really oiled finish. Um, so now we'll do this bat. Just look at the rebound, not the, not the sound. It actually sounds all right to me. Doesn't sound really high pitched. I think it's great. And uh, for what he paid for it, which I think is returning customer and also that Rob can't support the warranty from the UK. Really, really nice. I'm actually liking that bat. I didn't talk too much about stickers. There is a bit of embossing there. Um, Rob didn't put all the stickers on, he just chose what he thought was the nice looking stickers. Then it says Avalanche Elite. This is a custom bat. So, and I don't think he put all the stickers on, he left the others for the owner. There's no embossing there, there's a little bit of uh, embossing here. And that says traditional hand knocking in, oiled, hand hammered, power pressed, Rob Pack. .co.uk. So I've done something you haven't seen for a while. I've actually knocked that in, even though I said I thought it was ready to go. When I did test it out with the Lignum Vitae mallet, I did manage to get some dents into it. I decided to go right over it and uh, see if I could stop it from denting. Uh, I then actually applied a very light coat of oil just to bring a bit more colour out in the willow. Um, I hope you can see that there. I like to see timber a little bit yellow and not just pure white and gave it a polish up and also applied a shugu toe. It bubbled up a bit actually, but it will do the job. So what does it actually behave like now that it's had a little bit of extra work? Starting at the toe. Off center. Goes really well right off that middle position right there. Even goes good mid high. And there's something high as well. It's a really, really lovely bat. Final weight turned out to be 291 now. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. We've put, put on point uh, half an ounce with scuff and edge tape and shoe goo, a tiny, tiny little bit of oiling just to bring out a light, tiny little bit more colour. I hope you can see that's a little bit more of that nice willowy timber look. And we've given it a bit of a extra polish. So yeah, I'm really impressed with that bat. And well done to Blue Room and Rob Pat Cricket. I think uh, this is just a really, really well made bat. And if you own something like this, 
you'd be making runs really easy. Uh, it's 2.9 but it feels 2.8 in the hands, it's just a wand. Don't let grains fool you. A uh, number of grains, the look of the bat doesn't always represent performance. It definitely represents a higher price. But uh, a good bat maker will get the best out of the timber they've got available. And in this case, this is absolutely sensational and it compares very nicely to even another bat that I'll bring into the shot. There you go, there's a Morgs 20k that I've just finished knocking. Obviously it seems a little pingier, much, much softer press. And it's, I think it's really good. So 400 and something dollars versus you do the maths at what's best value and what actually represents the best performance for your money. One under a pack and that's the Blue Room Custom.